In the talk, I'm going to be reviewing the most up-to-date evidence on what's been happening with electronic cigarettes in England. We chart the um, uh, prevalence of use of electronic cigarettes every month in the English adult population and we look to see whether they're using them to stop smoking, whether they're using them to cut down uh, and how effective they're being in uh, the real world out there uh, when people are using them. And what we're seeing uh, is that as probably most people know there was an explosion in the use of electronic cigarettes um, a couple of years ago. This has now sort of flattened off a little bit so it's going up a little bit but, um, but in fact now electronic cigarettes are the most popular method that people use for trying to stop smoking. Um, now the question then is as to how effective are they and our evidence suggests that they're at least as effective as the nicotine replacement products, the licensed products which you get from a prescription and quite a bit more effective than licensed nicotine products that if you just buy them over the counter. So we're interested to follow this up further and to see whether this trend continues and to see whether electronic cigarettes in fact can be uh, a population level measure that can help people stop smoking and reduce lung cancer risk. Electronic cigarette users are almost exclusively either smokers wanting to cut down or are recent ex-smokers who've used them to stop smoking. Now we don't know with ex-smokers how long they're going to carry on using an e-cigarette for. Many people stop after a couple of months or so but many people carry on. Uh, some people are worried that electronic cigarettes might actually attract people who would never have smoked in the first place but in fact our evidence shows very clearly uh, that at the moment anyway that's certainly not the case. The use, usage is around 0.2 percent of the population which is actually very similar to use of licensed nicotine products by never smokers. We do um, a, a large number of different types of research. We do, apart from large population studies looking at use and effectiveness of different methods of stopping, we do a number of randomised controlled trials of both pharmacological uh, and behavioural interventions to help people stop smoking. So for example we're involved in studies of drugs like Varenicline or Champix as it's, uh, as it's known in this country uh, which is an effective smoking cessation aid um, and we've also got quite a large programme of research looking at smartphones and uh, websites and that kind of thing to help people stop. And then the other thing we do is we look at uh, how we can improve the performance of the stop smoking services. Every smoker in this country in theory has access to specialist support through their GP uh, with stopping smoking but the performance is quite variable so we're very keen to make sure that when a smoker goes to see a stop smoking specialist they get the very best help that they can. I think the key thing about electronic cigarettes is not necessarily so much that they're more effective than other uh, things that we've got such as uh, Varenicline or licensed nicotine products which you get from a, um, from a doctor. The really uh, striking thing about them is that they're so much more popular uh, and so a lot of people will just go out and buy an e-cigarette, they'll never get in touch with the health service and they'll use them to stop smoking and that's expanded the number of people who are using these kinds of more effective methods of stopping smoking as opposed to people who are using nothing at all. With regard to e-cigarettes there's a lot more that we need to know. For example we don't really yet know how effective they are in the very long term after a few months or so. You know, Do people go back to smoking after they've uh, been abstinent for a while and are still using an electronic cigarette? Um, we also need to know about the different types of electronic cigarettes. There's very, very different forms out there. The more modern ones seem to be more effective. These have refillable cartridges and seem to deliver nicotine more effectively than the, than the other ones. But we need to know now, does that translate into better quit rates? And how can we make sure that these products are as safe as they could possibly be? I think pretty much everyone acknowledges that they're certainly much safer than smoking but probably not completely safe. So the question is how safe can they be? There are already in train a, a couple of large clinical trials looking at the effectiveness of electronic cigarettes versus other methods. One of the problems with doing these trials is of course people who want to use an electronic cigarette want to use an electronic cigarette so they're not necessarily willing to be randomised into a trial. But um, you know, we'll uh, get round that. So um, yes, there's, there's important research still to do in that, um, but we also need to do research in other areas. For example, uh, we do work on how best 
uh, can GPs advise their patients to stop smoking, which strongly suggests to us that the best thing they can do is just offer support to everybody, not ask people whether they're interested in stopping, just offer support to everyone. Um, now we don't know that for sure, that's what the evidence suggests, so we're going to be looking at that a lot more closely. So in terms of uh, cancer outcomes, because obviously what we're talking about here is preventing cancer in the first place, lung cancer, soft gel cancer, and so on and so forth, um, you tend to see results quite a long way down the track in five, ten years or so. But of course with smoking you also get benefits much more rapidly in cardiovascular disease, in uh, improvements in respiratory function when you stop smoking. So for example if you have COPD you get fewer exacerbations and that sort of thing. Um, but obviously we're looking forward uh, to the next five or ten years to a, to a situation where smoking is not the single most important cause of cancer deaths but actually recedes into the background and that's something that I think we can, is a realistic prospect actually.